We live in a society. So what makes me cranky about Zack Snyder's Justice League? It's the same movie as last time, only longer and more miserable, which anyone who followed the saga that led to its creation could have told you was the inevitable outcome. It is abundantly clear now that there never was a Snyder cut, and that Joss Whedon really just did try to finish the movie that Snyder was making, only in color, both figuratively and literally, since Snyder wanted this to be in black and white. Frankly, it might as well be, given how washed out the colors are as it is, and I guess by now they've released that version too. Maybe I should have waited a few more days, since then I could have at least pretended something had a bright hue to it. That's Snyder's M.O. though, so it's not exactly unexpected, it's just still ugly and depressing. It really is a shame, because nobody, including myself, disputes that Snyder can really set up a shot when he wants to, and could really do some of these bits just to Sorry, no pun intended. I mean to say, if he wasn't so obsessed with making everything gray, it might even be beautiful. It reminds me of the old days of people demonstrating just how much better Man of Steel could look if you just got rid of the Vaseline filter. In any case, this clearly wasn't like Suicide Squad, where David Ayer finished his version of the movie and the studio was like, thanks, we hate it, and then they turned around and gave it to a movie trailer house to recut into something that's very different in its approach. In this case, though, virtually everything Whedon left on the cutting room floor belongs there. And I would not be the least bit surprised if most of it had already been cut by Snyder himself before Whedon came on board, because the absolute worst part about this four-hour endurance marathon is just how unbearably drawn out so much of it is. Put the matching sequences side by side and you'll see just how incredibly more efficiently the cinematic version accomplishes the same things. The first one I saw that way was the Wonder Woman bank heist scene at the beginning. Snyder's must be a full minute and a half longer, partly so he can make it absolutely clear that Wonder Woman is brutally killing these guys, but mostly for stupid stuff like a shot of the bad guy switching his gun from single shot to automatic fire. That is not to say there is not improvement in some areas or some scenes. As many people have noted, the characters are slightly more fleshed out and there is a bit more continuity and consistency overall, but given the sheer difference in length, how could it not be? If you have double the time to tell your story, you'd be hard-pressed not to spend at least a little more time with the characters or plot points you want to establish. No doubt if Whedon had the luxury of a four-hour runtime, you'd see many of the same extra character beats restored. And no doubt had Snyder been held to the two-hour mark, those would have been the first to go, as we saw with Batman v Superman. If that movie was any indication, between Cyborg talking to his dad or Aquaman standing in the surf and smashing a bottle in slow motion, Cyborg would have been the one that got cut. Snyder League is full of scenes that just go on, and on, and on, and on. It's almost ironic since I'd be the first one to complain about today's hyper-edited quick get to the next scene before the viewer figures out how stupid that was form of movie making. But surely there's a happy medium somewhere. In fact, I came to appreciate the Avengers movies all the more while watching this for just how much better they are at things like getting the characters to pose for the camera in group shots without it feeling like they're doing it explicitly for that purpose. Snyder repeatedly just has his hero stand in a line flexing for the camera in slow motion like he's making an underwear commercial or something. Not to mention the Avengers are brightly colored so they stand out from one another, whereas the Justice League is basically one brownish-gray smear. Snyder League also constantly starts and stops. Had this actually aired as a miniseries over a few weeks like they originally planned, that would be less of a problem since it would be broken up that way. But ultimately, they're not so much the beginnings of a new episode in one overarching story as they are just a restart of the same story. So many times I found myself thinking, you know, why didn't the movie just start with this sequence and move on from here? I feel like if they gave me all the footage they shot for this movie, even I could recut this into a good two, two and a half hour flick just by removing all that redundant stuff. For example, the scene where the Parademon raids Star Labs makes for a great opening stinger. It tells you something's afoot, and it's got that horror movie hard cut to black going for it. Then you could do the everybody knows sequence from the Whedon cut for your credits so that we can see that the death of Superman is a big deal, and then we could move on from there. Maybe I should do a whole video on that. Hey WB, any chance you'll give me 70 million dollars for a cranky cut of Justice League? Hashtag create the cranky cut. Huh? Huh? Anyone? Bueller? Anyway, this is one of the core structural issues that ensures that neither version of the film works. By having three mother boxes, each of which has to be stolen for the villain to win, you effectively have three separate beginnings for the same movie. Every time Steppenwolf picks up a box, the movie starts over again. There should be one box. Maybe it changes hands along the way, maybe Steppenwolf cuts a swath across the world to get it, but we don't need to stop to reintroduce the central conflict all the time. 
We don't need to watch as another group of otherwise powerful warriors gets warfed by Steppenwolf to explain to us yet again he's the big bad. Not to mention the term mother box just sounds silly on its own and the more of them in the movie, the more times we have to hear it. This version even triples down by adding the unity and the freaking anti-life equation. Look, I know anti-life is to Darkseid as snapping is to Thanos, but this is the worst possible way to introduce that concept. And of course, if some of these characters had their own movies, we wouldn't have to stop and explain who they are either. Though, frankly, I think you could still introduce the new team members in here if you just picked a point character. Neither Whedon's version nor Snyder's version did because, again, we've got three mother boxes, so we've got to jump around anyway. Like, say if you made Barry Allen the point guy. We could start by seeing Barry's adoration of Superman and get introduced to his powers, then Bruce could show up to recruit him, and now he's wowed by Batman, and then Diana arrives to tell us of the larger threat that's only been hinted at up until now, which starts our ticking clock, then they can go searching for clues to the Mother Box's location, and maybe they end up asking Aquaman what Atlantis knows about it, then Cyborg shows up when he gets wind of it to say, this is how I got made into what I am today, and so forth. You could do it with Cyborg as the point character if you wanted, or it could just be Batman's recruiting mission. In any case, we need somebody to tie it all together. But even that cannot fix the biggest underlying problem with this whole story. Superman. Whedon's biggest changes attempted to rectify the dour approach Snyder has taken with all of these characters that ruined Superman in the first place. It didn't really work because it was too little too late and it led to that CGI mustache removal fiasco, but I appreciated the attempt. Here, the Superman problem is even worse because of the cognitive dissonance between what these characters think about Superman and what we actually saw from Superman in the previous movies. In this version, the characters don't really argue about whether or not they should be resurrecting the Man of Steel because all of them appear to be in complete awe of him, Batman especially. The problem is, they're not friends with Superman, and we haven't seen this Superman do, well, Superman things, such that we, the audience, might feel that reverence for him and assign it to them by proxy. All I know about this Superman is that he leveled half a city, looked absolutely miserable helping people, and then died needlessly, thereby wasting one of the most epic storylines in all of comic book history. The sum total of this Batman's interaction with this Superman was trying to kill him. That he would do such a complete heel turn and now have total faith in the goodness of Superman is just not believable. To say nothing of that being the opposite of how Batman is in general. I could believe that... Kevin Conroy's animated Batman would go to the ends of the earth to resurrect his Superman, since they were the best of friends. But the only thing connecting Ben Affleck's Batman to Henry Cavill's Superman is their moms have the same name. Wonder Woman running around calling him Kal-El and begging the last son of Krypton to snap out of it has the same feeling. She met him once, for like a minute and a half. How the hell does she even know that name? Did she have a heart-to-heart -heart with Lois or Martha between the movies or something? Then we watch Superman completely wreck them all at the same time, and you're once again forced to wonder, what the hell do we need the rest of these guys for? Superman could snap Steppenwolf's neck in no time flat and throw the boxes into space. The resurrection part is one of the few things handled better in this cut, though. While I prefer the lead-up in Whedon, since they actually bothered to debate whether or not this is a good idea, doing away with the we need to funnel 1.21 gigawatts into the flux capacitor the instant the box touches the water thing was definitely welcome. It just shouldn't look like it worked. Superman shouldn't be resurrected in that moment, and he shouldn't fight the rest of the League. Not only for what I said a moment ago about making the League look useless, but also because it completely undercuts the villain, who is actually much worse in this version. Don't get me wrong, Whedon's version is a goofy cartoon bad guy. But Snyder's version is a goofy cartoon bad guy and a crybaby. He's got more motivation in this version, I guess, but it makes him look like a sniveling coward, not a threat worthy of assembling the whole Justice League. Worse still, we know he's Darkseid's bitch. And this version of the movie shows Darkseid getting his ass kicked the first time he came to Earth. So if Darkseid can be driven off by our horse-riding ancestors, in what universe is his crybaby minion supposed to be threatening? Especially when you just brought Superman back to life and he proves he can manhandle them all with ease. Not to mention the fact that a pissed off Henry Cavill already looks more imposing than this video game villain wannabe ever does. By the way, all the money they spent reskinning Steppenwolf was utterly wasted because he looks even sillier than before. There's still a huge fidelity issue and all the ridiculous moving pieces add nothing to the character. Just focus on making him look more detailed than a PlayStation 2 character and call it a day. Certainly don't put a half-assed dark side on the screen too, at least leave some kind of threat hanging in the air. It really makes you miss Thanos. But back to the point, I always thought the idea of forming the League in response to the death of Superman was one of the few clever things that Snyder brought to the table. But as I said, you need some connections between these characters and Superman for it to really work. And if you're gonna do it, then it's kinda key to leave him out of the formation of the League. 
If the point is that we can't protect the world without Superman unless we work together, then don't have them decide they still can't protect the world without Superman. Leave Superman dead and let them defeat Steppenwolf with their combined powers. Actually subvert expectations for once by not having Superman deus ex machina in just in the nick of time to save their collective asses. Keep them in your pocket for your evil Superman sequel tease. Or just go with what was probably Snyder's original thought of making Superman the villain in the first place. Because otherwise, you've just defeated the entire purpose of the movie. I mean, which is it? Is the Justice League a force to be reckoned with? Or is it just the Superman Resurrection Committee? Speaking of naming conventions, why is this even called the Justice League at all? With the Avengers, we got a whole scene of Tony explaining to Loki that they're calling themselves the Avengers because, well, they're gonna avenge the Earth and their fallen pal Coulson. But these guys aren't coming together to mete out justice or protect the justice system from criminals or to get justice for their fallen friend. They're really just a bunch of superheroes becoming buddies. So less League of Justice and more super friends. I'm sure Zack Snyder could have had a field day with the Wonder Twins. It just goes back to this whole issue of DC trying to rush things instead of taking their time. Form them for justice-related reasons, save the world-ending apocalypse that is Darkseid for later. Still, I will admit that the redone climax does work better overall, though I don't care for the magic reset button they use. It's really the only part of the movie that feels like a significant departure from the previous version, which is unsurprising because it's likely that's the only stuff that wasn't finished when Snyder left, and it's the easiest to change given that it's mostly CGI. Either way, it's the only time I didn't feel like I was watching a slower version of the same stuff I saw before. I like the characters having more specific roles to play, but as much as that Russian family thing was shoehorned into the theatrical cut, I do miss seeing superheroes saving people, and I'm still not into the version of Superman who looks like he's going to murder me at any moment. Then Snyder had to go and squander all that goodwill by reminding me how much he doesn't like all these characters and would much rather be telling the stupid nightmare world story where the Joker's got to be talking about reach arounds and Batman's threatening to kill him slowly and painfully, complete with F-bombs so that you know how serious he is. That whole thing is more juvenile than any of the lowbrow jokes Whedon tried to stuff into the theatrical cut. So where does that all put us on balance? Everyone wants to know which of these movies is better. As far as I'm concerned, the answer is neither. For one, I'm not entirely sure it's a fair comparison. The sheer difference in runtime gives Snyder far more room to work with than Whedon had, and the old footage was his style in the first place, so anything new is going to fit in better on that basis alone. I suspect if we had a Justice League miniseries competition, where both Whedon and Snyder were asked to make a four-hour long show about these heroes, we'd probably all enjoy Whedon's more, given their relative past performances. Well, those of us who aren't colorblind, anyway. For two... For every positive change that's made in Snyder's version, there's like a full hour of other unnecessary garbage that's far worse. And ultimately, I don't want to sit through two and a half hours of garbage to get to an hour or so of a relatively decent movie. Like I said, I almost wish I could do a recut of this to get us to something near the optimized version of what this story could be. The thing is, though, it's never going to be what I'd call a good movie for all of those structural failings I talked about earlier. It's just varying shades of less bad. I've heard people say that, yeah, but it's still a net positive because it's a win for the fans and Zack Snyder finally got to realize his vision. Well, I'm sorry to tell you that neither of those things is entirely true. This isn't like Sonic the Hedgehog, where the fan backlash over Sonic's design gave the creative team the opening to override the executives and fix the problem the executives had created. In this case, we had executives desperate to find something, anything, they could use to launch their new streaming service. They originally planned to use Game of Thrones as their big hook for HBO Max, but we all saw what happened with that. With their hottest property now completely radioactive, they couldn't rely on its spin-offs and prequels to compete in this market. Netflix had legacy users and original content, Disney Plus had Disney's entire film catalog, plus Marvel and Star Wars, CBS had Star Trek to run into the ground, what did they have? Nothing. Nothing except DC. But none of the DCEU movies are popular enough to get people to flock to the service either. There were, however, a bunch of rabid Snyder fans who would happily promote anything with his name on it who had been whining about the Snyder Cut for years. And voila, the solution presented itself. We don't need to take a chance on a new DC movie. We've got like four hours of Justice League footage just laying around. We can cut it together, slap Snyder's name on it, and release it like a miniseries, and they'll subscribe for months to see every episode. And that's probably how it would have gone except for this whole pandemic thing, which gave the executives an entirely new option. Now they can release new movies to HBO Max the same day they come out in the theater, so they don't need to drag this Justice League thing out anymore. That's why they're already telling you they're not going to restore the Snyderverse or whatever. Thus, without HBO Max, there would be no Zack Snyder's Justice League. You'd still be begging them to release the cut that didn't exist, and they'd still be giving you the finger. No four-hour edition of Justice League in theaters and IMAX, no Blu-ray Ultimate Edition, nothing. 
Because they don't care about you. And this wasn't about giving you what you wanted. It was about what you would promote for them. It was about exploiting the only group of fans they had left to exploit. And we know definitively it's not quite Snyder's unrestrained vision either. One of the things to come out of that whole Geeks and Gamers charity fiasco was the revelation that Snyder shot a Green Lantern scene and WB forced him to cut it. So clearly they were still exercising editorial control. I suspect that part of that control was making sure this thing was as long as possible while costing as little new money as they could get away with. After all, six chapters across as many weeks gets you at least one renewal, whereas four might only be the introductory fee. That means creepy singing girls sniffing Aquaman's sweatshirt, yes. Potential licensing issues of a new Green Lantern scene, no. The studio wanting to pad the runtime also explains why so much of the stuff that even a first year film student would cut gets to stick around. After all, I don't think even Zack Snyder is that self-indulgent. Bottom line, everybody here got played by the very people you think you finally got one up on. Even Snyder, though at least he probably took home a sizable paycheck to spend the pandemic redoing what had already been done before. They even got me for that matter, since I'm sitting here talking about this do-over for a movie I didn't like the first time, in a franchise full of movies I can't stand, made by a guy who completely screwed us out of any chance for a good DC movie universe for the foreseeable future. So is Zack Snyder's Justice League better than Joss Whedon's Justice League? No, it's just longer. And if I gotta choose between suffering for four hours or suffering for two, I'll take the two every time. That's what I thought about the so-called Snyder cut anyway. As always, you are welcome to comment passionately in one direction or the other down below, to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and to subscribe if you want to see more from me in the future. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. I have something to complain about.